One of the reasons I love working in the theater is it is a collaborative art form. And this handshake between the creators and the performers and the, or the interpreters is one of the most exciting things about it. And you know, sometimes, yes, of course I have it in my imagination when I'm, when I'm writing it. Uh, what's so lovely is to watch, and exciting is to watch people, you know, the, uh, use their own imaginations to uh, bring something new, uh, new to it. And uh, that's what they've done here, and Tomer's done it, and uh, with the introduction of dance, uh, which is a big part of the, this production and which is not something I saw being done, but I think they've done a beautiful job and it's very evocative. I have a, have a great relationship with Jake, a great uh, friendship and also a, and a great professional uh, relationship. We've worked together for many, many years now and many years to come. I just, I just love working with him. I think he's an incredibly gifted composer uh, who is a, the a, he's a theater guy. He's, he, it's always about storytelling and in Jake's case, it's, a, it's about storytelling primarily through the joy and the mystery and the magic of the human voice. Um, he is an operatic composer first and foremost because he really uh, celebrates the, the human voice in, in everything he does. It sounds self-evident. Everyone is always, you know, people are always singing and, and so forth. But um, how you feature the voice and how you trust the voice to be the, the major uh, thing that sort of uh, carries the marrow of the matter, which is uh, the music, is um, it's different for different uh, different people, and I, I just love the way Jake does it, and, and so it's been a great collaboration, and I look forward to years to come. You're trying to honor uh, the, the the lives that you're representing, but you're also trying to, you know, uh, Bonar had this, the the painter had this great line that art is lots of lies making up one great truth or a great truth. And so I mean, what we're really trying to do is, is to honor the emotional reality of these people's lives. The facts that are, are portrayed in the, in the piece are, are accurate, um, but there's, there's some poetic license without question uh, uh, as we've created, you know, putting these, uh, these two stories on stage. Uh, but what we're trying to do ultimately is allow music to uh, depict the emotional reality of these people's lives, because that's why we're here, that's why we love opera, because uh, music is uh, this incredible conduit for the human heart. Before the music, before the words, is the story. And uh, so that is the well from which we're drawing uh, uh, sort of sustenance. And so the first thing is, what do we want to say, when, and how do we structure it, and what's happening on stage, and how, uh, and you know, what are they singing about? Um, I always say that you know the words are obviously very important, but what people are singing about, why sing, why why do I have to sing right now? That's the question that you have to answer every uh, every moment, because that's what, what you know why we're here. Practically speaking, you know, there's the structure of the piece uh, that's crafted in, as a, the architecture of an opera. And then the libretto does come first, and always has. I and mean, the libretto comes before the music, uh, so that the music can reflect the structure and the meaning and the emotion of the words and the, uh, and the storytelling. And that's, that was true for Mozart, it was true for Puccini, and, and, and just about everyone throughout history. Um, and that's true for, uh, for us as well. Um, that said, you know, when I'm writing a piece and I'm doing the structure, Jake is, I'm always talking to him about it and uh, I've come, come up with an idea and, and, you know, knock ideas around with him and we're always uh, uh, working together. Furthermore, when the piece is being written, you, we're learning more information from the music. The music that Jake is writing is teaching us about who these people are. So sometimes the music, uh, the, the music that has, that it's emerging from his imagination, will take the story uh, in a different, uh, in a slightly different direction. So he'll come to, back to me and say, you know, I, I need something else here because the music has revealed something. So that that that's part of the process too. But basically the first comes the, the, the story, the structure, what's happening, what people are doing, and then uh, the libretto comes and then the music. Please. This piece really is, um, I think the, the, the takeaway from it will be a meditation on survival. And the fact is that we have these two characters who come to various 
a very different conclusions about what was what is required for them to live uh, to live another day and how they're going to live, and uh, it's it's beyond the stereotype of uh, of a survivor as a hero, as a survivor as a martyr, and it's, hopefully it's a much more nuanced uh, perspective on on these people's lives. But also I think what will stay with people are these emotional stories, the actual facts of what took place, and of course this beautiful music that reflects something that I can't possibly tell you in words what you'll feel. The music will, uh, will carry the day and these people's voices will carry the day and I think what you'll take away is the feeling that the music leaves you with. Mm -hmm.